When it comes to bodybuilding, people are always looking for the next biggest thing. We're always trying to find shortcuts, some kind of a new training methodology or supplement, drug or compound that'll give us the results that we've always dreamed of. And if you've been on social media for the past 6 to 12 months, you've probably heard of a substance called SLUPP332. SLUPP332 has been touted as a miracle drug, as a drug with no consequence that will help you burn fat and improve body composition just by taking it, a literal magic pill. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. It probably doesn't do anything at all. So what is SLUPP332? Why is it named that? Why does it sound like a pet name for one of Elon Musk's broodmares? SLUPP332 is a non-selective estrogen-related agonist. It's thought to be an exercise mimetic, which means that when you take it, when you ingest it, the body behaves as though it has just exercised. This can improve things like nutrient partitioning. It can speed up your metabolism, which would ultimately theoretically result in improved body composition and fat loss. And it's thought that the proposed mechanism of action here, that SLUPP332 does this by improving mitochondrial efficiency and biogenesis. That is a lot of words. What does that mean? So everyone knows mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells. They help to regulate our metabolism within the body. So you as an individual have a basal metabolic rate. This is the number of calories you need to keep the basic biological processes of your body going. Mitochondria play into this directly. Mitochondria break down the macronutrients you consume, proteins, fats, and carbs, to produce ATP or energy. And the more efficient your mitochondria are, the more energy they produce per unit of oxygen consumed. And studies have shown that higher mitochondrial density and efficiency are associated with increased resting metabolic rates and increased energy expenditures. So we can see here why SOUPP332 might be effective for inducing fat loss and improving body composition. If it improves mitochondrial efficiency, that might improve our basal metabolic rate. That's exciting. That's amazing. So why am I here telling you that it doesn't do anything? Well, there are three huge problems with SOUPP332. Firstly, it has only ever been studied in mice. There's absolutely no human data on this substance. There's no human data. It's been studied in mice. Now again, I'm not suggesting that rodent models are completely useless. They are an important part of the testing process, of the scientific process for developing new pharmaceuticals. I totally get that. But they are, they are one step among many, and you cannot generalize findings from rodent studies to humans. It simply doesn't work that way. I've looked at my YouTube analytics. My audience does not consist of mice. This substance might work for mice, right? We don't even know conclusively that it does, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work for humans. Secondly, because this has only ever been studied in animals, in mice, we actually have no idea how to dose it in humans. And that's why when you listen to people talk about it, when you watch YouTube videos, they'll take vastly differing amounts of SLUPP332, and that's because they're making it up. So there may be an effective dose, but we don't actually know what it is. You can't just extrapolate a dosage from animal models and apply it to humans. That's not how pharmacology works. These drugs interact differently in different organisms. That's why we have clinical testing. Lastly, and most importantly, just because SOUPP332 might improve mitochondrial efficiency, that does not mean it actually does so in the human body. So what am I talking about here? Well, the human body is very good at regulating homeostasis, at keeping the body the same. Your body is really complex. There are a ton of dynamic intersecting systems, and your body is working at all times to keep everything running, to keep your body from falling apart. And mitochondria, right, the powerhouse of the cells, they are a vital component of your body. And it is naive to think that you can take a tiny pill and change something so important to the body without the body resisting and fighting back. And we see this all the time with medications, supplements, and vitamins. For example, many people don't respond to vitamin D supplementation. Vitamin D is fat soluble. There's no reason why your body shouldn't be able to absorb it and thus increase your levels of vitamin D, but it doesn't always work for people. That's because the body is good at maintaining homeostasis. The body is good at defending its borders and maintaining a bulwark against incoming substances. And so again, this proposed mechanism of action may work, it may work in theory, but in practice, it probably doesn't. And the best evidence I have for you for this 
is that there's very, very few reported side effects for SOUPP332. And there is a saying in pharmacology, is that a drug with no side effects has no effect at all. And that's probably the likeliest scenario here. I'm not saying it's hurting you, but it probably isn't doing anything. But you say, AJ, you're just being closed-minded. There's all these reports. People love this drug. Isn't it great? What are you talking about? You're full of shit. Well, listen, I hate to break this to you, but there's probably three things going on here. One, it's possible that SOUPP332 does do something. I'm not saying it doesn't. I can't possibly say that. Just like I can't conclusively say that it does something, I can't conclusively say that it doesn't do anything. So it's totally possible that some of these people are actually experiencing real efficacious results by consuming this substance. I am not discounting that. Secondly, most people who take SOUPP332 report feeling energized. They report that their mood has improved, that they just feel better. That's awesome. That's great. But you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like placebo. Placebo is essentially when you believe something is going to happen, and then it does. When you believe there's going to be a positive effect from consuming a drug or engaging in a behavior, oftentimes it does. The mind is incredibly powerful. The mind is unbelievable. And if you're really bought into a process, if your favorite influencer has recommended this drug, if you've paid for it, you are more likely to believe it is going to be efficacious. And that's cool. I actually think that athletes should leverage placebo. I think placebo is a powerful tool, but that does not mean that this drug actually does anything. Lastly, and again, this is probably the biggest factor here, people take this drug while they take other drugs. They're pursuing a lot of other interventions simultaneously. In fact, SOUPP332 came on the scene about the same time as a number of other GLP-1 agonists, things like semaglutide, terzepidide. And so because of that, people are taking those pharmaceuticals, those drugs which have gone through clinical testing, have been shown to be efficacious, and then they're pairing them with an experimental substance. And as a result, they can't tell what's doing what. I have yet to hear of anyone who's conducted a real scientific experiment on their body where they changed nothing at all and took SOUPP332 and body composition and fat loss improved. I've not seen it. I'm not saying it's not possible. But what I think is most likely happening is that people are taking lots of different things, among them SOUPP332, and some of those things are efficacious. And as a result, you just can't tell what's doing what. I'm going to really hone in on this point because I think it's important. I'm going to show you a clip from a Vigorous Steve podcast. Vigorous Steve was speaking with Dr. Dean St. Mart. This isn't a call out. I respect both of those creators and I think they're both smart. I don't think they are scamming anyone. They are proponents of SOUPP332, but I do not think they're lying about it. I just think that they're mistaken. So I'm going to play this clip now. Steve is asking Dean about a recent experience in which he stopped taking SOUPP332 and a number of other mitochondrial agents and then resumed that course of drugs. I want you to really listen to Dean's response here because I think it's very telling and very indicative of what's actually going on here. What did you notice when you removed it one week before surgery? And then I'll fill in after. So I stopped it. I stopped everything from that mitochondrial optimization perspective just after Christmas. So by the time I went for the surgery, it was two weeks. I've pretty much not taken SLU, mm. uh, methylene blue. MOTC, I would have taken five milligrams of it at the start of December. So by the time I got to mm. the surgery, it was maybe six weeks since the five milligram dose. Definitely, I noticed, now, I, I wouldn't say I ate a lot of foods, but I ate more foods than usual. And I think that was me just, I wasn't really tracking what I was eating. I was listening to what my body was saying. And then I was just eating my standard clean food diet, but more of it. I definitely found that when I stopped it, my fat consumption went up in terms mm. of like wanting to eat more, um, I guess, polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats from almonds, macadamias. I found that sort of crept up in my diet. Um, and obviously as a consequence, fat got deposited then with the increased mm. caloric intake. In the clip, Dean describes that after he stopped taking SOUPP332, he gained weight. That would suggest that the drug is efficacious, that it's helping him to lose weight. But if you actually pay attention, what he says is after he stopped taking it, he started eating more. He started consuming more fats. His calories went up and his body composition worsened. So what was the drug doing? What was the drug doing? 
Are we supposed to infer from this that the drug made him less likely to consume fats, that it was having some impact on his psychology, and thus he made better dietary decisions? Is that the mechanism of action? Because that doesn't sound like mitochondrial biogenesis. That sounds like placebo. That sounds like Dean was taking a substance, he thought it had some impact, and as a result, he changed his behaviors. So again, I'm not saying he's a liar. I'm not saying he's stupid. I am not criticizing the man. But I am questioning his own words, because by the telling of this story, it doesn't sound like that drug was doing anything. It sounds like the actor here is Dean not the drug. And the thing that I also want to add is Dean was taking more than just SOUPP332 here. He was taking a number of other agents. And the only difference he saw after cessation of use was that he changed his dietary habits. That to me doesn't sound like a very effective fat loss drug. I don't think you should spend money. I don't think you should take a substance that has never been studied before in humans on the off chance that it makes you crave less fat. That does not seem worth it. Again, I have to emphasize, there's no human data on this substance. There's no human data. So maybe it does something, but are you really willing to take that risk with your health, with your wallet, on the off chance that an experimental drug will help you lose a couple of pounds? I just don't think it's worth it. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts here. I know that a lot of people love SOUPP332. I'm probably going to get some flack here. And again, I want to emphasize, I'm not calling anyone out. That's not my goal here. My goal is just to encourage some critical thinking and to help people realize that the brain is often far more powerful than whatever we're taking in a pill.